Hey, what's up guys? Joker here, and today is the launch of Navi. Actually, it's already been out for two days as it launched on Sunday. Uh, coming at you with a little bit late um, for this review for a couple of reasons. First, uh, in their infinite wisdom, AMD decided to release the Navi GPUs as well as the Zen 2 CPUs on the same exact day. And I would just like to go on record and saying, please never do that again because it's ridiculous. Also, um, we had the 4th of July holiday weekend and everything, and it was on a Sunday. And, you know, I get it. They wanted it to release on July 7th because that's 7-7 seven, seven and it's 7 nanometer. Real cute joke that only a billionaire CEO would find funny and everyone having to work on that day would find to be horrendously awful and not funny at all. And on top of that, we also had some last minute price cuts, which ended up actually being a really good thing for Navi. I'm not hating on Navi. I've got a lot of good things to say about this product. I just think the, the launch could have been handled a little bit better. So we're gonna be taking a look at these cards in just a moment. But first, today's video is brought to you by levelgo.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro for under $16, Microsoft Office 2016 Professional Plus for under $40, and Microsoft Office 2019 for under $80. And if you use my code JSL22 at checkout, you can get 22% off of Windows 10 or use the code JSL16 to get 16% off of any software over on levelgo.com when you use the links down in the description below. So before we get into any actual gaming performance numbers there, uh, definitely needs to be something said about the price cut and the impact of RTX Super Graphics cards, which I do not have for testing in this video. I was not sampled the Super Cards by NVIDIA, which right now we only have the 2060 and the 2070, but it's no doubt their impact is already being felt as it's kind of sh shook things up and it was kind of meant to be this big middle finger in the face of AMD right prior to its launch, but actually I feel like the RTX Super Cards ended up helping the Navi GPUs because we got that price cut which definitely changed things around a bit and we saw the 5700 XT come down to $400 where this would originally be competing with the 2070 which I did test here which it trades blows with that however with that card now being obsolete and Nvidia ending its production and now switching over to just the 2070 Super its actual competitor is the 2060 Super which costs the same $399 for a base Founders Edition model. And then we've got the RX, the, not the RX, it's just the 5700, selling at $349, and that competes with the vanilla 2060, which is still in production. NVIDIA has not ended production of the 2060 yet, so the 2060 really competes with the 5700, and the 5700 XT competes with the 2060 Super, and yeah, it, based on everything I've seen so far, um, the 5700 XT actually does pretty much edge out the 2060 Super. And as you'll see in the results in this video, the 2060 gets absolutely stomped by the 5700, even with these reference models, which don't run as hot as a lot of people think, although the fans are definitely loud. Um, I just think what happened with the Super cards is has done nothing but favor AMD is now they've got this better price point where they're kind of standing on their own because they're only competing with the 2060 Super and the 2060, which then you have the 2070 Super on its own at $450, not really competing with anything. And it starts to make a whole lot less sense to actually even consider that card unless you really want to take advantage of the, te take advantage of the Tensor and the RT cores. As far as my test setup is concerned today, with both the AMD and the NVIDIA cards, everything was done inside the same system, which is a closed system, inside of a Be Quiet Silent Base 801 case. Um, we were running on the i7-8700K, which is overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz, along with uh, 16 gigabytes of, I almost said 32, I was thinking about my Zen testing, it's 16 gigabytes of G-Scale Trident Z RAM at 3200 megahertz, and I was running on the latest driver from NVIDIA, which is 430.86. And for AMD, it was 19.7.1, which is the latest and, well, the first public driver, but also the last um, press driver that was issued out by AMD, kind of also at the last minute, along with the price changes over the weekend, which was meant to adjust an issue with throttling. If you were to do anything really in, um, you know, in Wattman or in something like MSI Afterburner, which I was using, even if you weren't overclocking, if you would just move the power slider, um, it would have issues and start to throttle and pretty much shut down the system, which has not been entirely fixed yet. I still cannot overclock with these yet. I still think we need some more driver revisions for overclocking results. So I tested at stock settings 
apart from the power limit slider, which I do increase all the way to the max on an AMD and Nvidia cards, and that's just something that I always do because it's pretty much free performance there. And using that, the 5700 XT actually boosts quite well, pretty much running at two gigahertz flat out, and the temps aren't fantastic, but they aren't as bad as some people are making them out to be. They sometimes get up around 70 to 75 degrees Celsius, running a full stress test for an hour in F uh, F1 2019 on a loop. Uh, it got up to 78 degrees Celsius. Granted, um, with the stock MSI Afterburner fan curve, which is not the same as the stock curve, but MSI Afterburner has their own fan curve that you can uh, enable if you want to, and that's typically what I use for all GPUs. Um, you know, that's all I was using. I wasn't doing anything crazy. I wasn't running at 100% fan speed, but it still did get quite loud. It was definitely audible, kind of sounded like um, an airplane about to take off. The 5700 was not anywhere near as loud and didn't run anywhere near as hot, staying pretty much around 60 degrees Celsius for the majority of the time, as you'll be seeing in some of these side-by-side -side comparisons, which were all run at ultra settings. So I do first want to talk about the 5700 versus the RTX 2060, which is its actual competitor right now in the market. As I said, it's not competing with any of the super cards. The 2060 is still in production and it is competing with that at $350. And in my testing, the 5700 won across the board in 1080p and 1440p gaming at ultra settings. And all these side-by-sides here right now that you're seeing with the 5700 were run at 1080p ultra settings. So that is basically what you're seeing here. And they do trade blows in a couple of titles, but for um, the vast majority of the titles here, the 5700 does win as you'll see in the graphs in just a moment. So really right now at the $350 price, the 5700 is reigning king and Nvidia doesn't really have anything to answer that. Now, obviously the numbers are pretty close. So just like with the 2060 Super versus uh, the 5700 XT really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to go with the NVIDIA card unless you specifically want it for Tensor Cores and RT Cores because the AMD cards are pretty much better right now at this point, although it's closer at the higher end there. Uh, so that's definitely something worth considering. And also with only having these reference blower style cards right now from AMD, it's understandable that if you're going to want to overclock and get better temperatures in general, it's probably going to be advisable to wait for an aftermarket solution. Although, as I said, these cards were totally capable. Um, they just happened to run a little bit loud, as you would expect with a blower style card. I really did wish they would have gone with something like the heatsink and the shroud on the uh, Radeon 7 card. I think that would have been a much better solution at the end of the day to be able to keep these cards cool and not anywhere near as loud as they are. Hopefully, um, the next, next time around when Next time AMD does a launch, they can decide to go with something with two fans or even three fans would definitely be better. Um, I just think the blower style cards are pretty much done at this point. And even though they do kind of show an advantage in some cases, very small uh, enclosures, or even in something like my case I was using for this testing was the Silent Base 801. That is a silent chassis, so it doesn't have the most amazing airflow, although it's pretty decent. I do have uh, a rear exhaust fan as well as two 140 millimeter fans in the front and the CPU is running on a water cooler. So, um, you know, temperatures were definitely manageable for me and uh, not really anything awful, but I would probably want an aftermarket card, especially when it comes to the 5700 XT. So let's jump in here and take a look at the graphs. We'll start off at 1080p on ultra settings with the average FPS. And of course we have the 1% lows here as well. Um, first, I do want to draw your attention again, looking at the 5700 versus the 2060, where you could see it's basically a clean sweep across the board. Some titles are a little bit closer than others. Shadow of the Tomb Raider did end up favoring um, the 2060 by a small margin, but for every other game tested here, some by small margin, some by pretty significant ones like 20 FPS and up, the 5700 absolutely destroys the RTX 2060. No question about it, at the same price, the 5700 is the better buy unless you want to use RT or Tensor Cores, which isn't even really um, something I would want to do anyway at a card with $350. That should not be your primary focus. I would take the 5700 over the 2060, even with RTX cards and NVIDIA cards now supporting adaptive sync monitors. You know, I, although I've seen most of the monitors I've tried, actually all the monitors I've personally tried with adaptive sync have worked perfectly fine with NVIDIA cards. You do have that guarantee that if you go with AMD, that you're going to get a 100% compatibility rating with any free sync or adaptive sync monitor that you do happen to pick up out there. Now, as far as it's concerned with the 5700 XT, that is holding its own really well with the 2070, although the 2070 does take the edge in more games here. Um, and the 2070 is a little bit faster 
than a fifth than a uh, oh, sorry an RTX 2060 Super, which would be the actual competitor to the XT. As I mentioned, I don't have it here for testing, but looking around on a bunch of other websites, it seems like it does trade blows with the XT. But in most titles, just like with the 2060 versus the 5700, it ends up losing out in most games. So I feel like at the $400 price point. Uh, the 5700 XT would be the winner there as well. Go ahead and show you guys the 1% lows here now, where it's telling pretty much the same exact story as what we were just taking a look at. Um, you know, these cards, the 5700 XT, the 5700, 2060, um, all cards that you could still buy right now. Obviously, you can't buy the 2070 anymore. Uh, all, both all very capable cards for 1080p and ultra settings in most games. There's going to be some titles like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Metro Exodus, Shadow of the Tomb Raider that you're going to struggle a little bit with. But again, this is ultra settings. Keep in mind that most of these titles, particularly something like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, there's like one killer option, like the volumetric, it's, it's fog or clouds or something like that. You can go ahead and drop that down and gain like 15 to 20 frames per second. So yeah, don't think that these cards can't do 1080p in almost nearly ultra settings in pretty much every title out there. Um, in some of these games, you're dropped down one setting and you're going to be absolutely golden getting like an extra 20 frames per second on top of it. When it comes to 1440p ultra settings, again, the 5700 XT and the 2070 are definitely going to be the better choices here, although the 5700 and the 2060 can both hang in there with 1440p as well, although in probably a lot more games with those with the lower end cards you're going to want to probably drop games down to high settings maybe not all settings but you know maybe a few of them there like shadows and other things like that as i said volumetric clouds or fog um, and some of the ubisoft titles that have those that are a real killer option of course you can play around with anti-aliasing a bit um, and you'll be able to definitely be able to use those 350 dollars cards for 1440p um, but if that is your main focus, I would say the 2070 or, well, the 2060 Super now and the 5700 XT are going to be your best bet. And last, we'll go ahead and show the 1% lows. Again, you know, pretty much same story as what we just saw right there. You're going to see some titles are going to drop down below 60 here. So you're going to have to play around with the settings in order to be able to get the best frame rate possible. So at the end of the day, what is my recommendation to you, which I've already kind of said, um, you know, towards the start of this video, uh, between the, the 5700 XT and the 2060 Super, which is its competitor at $400, I would personally take the XT to get the better free sync compatibility. Uh, although they are very close cards, the XT and what I've seen online does get the slight edge in a lot of titles. But you will definitely probably want to wait for aftermarket coolers so they're not running as loud and they're not running as hot, unfortunately. So you're, even though you may have been waiting for Navi already, you may have to wait just a little bit longer as the rumors right now are saying they're probably going to be out by mid-August. Uh, maybe even late August, early September, we'll actually start to see some aftermarket cards. I do hope to maybe get some samples in from maybe Gigabyte or PowerColor, who I've worked with in the past and looking at their aftermarket cooling solutions. So hopefully in the not too distant future, we'll be able to take a look at some of the Red Devil variants against the 5700 XT and see if that their, their coolers can tame the beast of the XT. And then when it comes to the 5700 and the, 20, and the uh, 2060, I have to say that it is a clear cut winner for the 5700. Like no questions about it. Just it's it's a better card, hands down. Um, of course, like I said, you know, a couple times in this video. RTX cards have the RT cores, they have the Tensor cores, so if you want to use things like ray tracing and DLSS technology, which AMD has promised they will support some type of variation of that in the future, although just kind of like when RTX cards came out, um, it's just a promise at this point, although we do actually have some evidence now at this point with the RTX cards actually supporting that, um, you usually need to be using the higher end cards like the 2080 and the 2080 Ti to really be able to leverage that in any sort of meaningful way. And it's still only a few titles here or there. The technology is still definitely in its infancy, and I think we'll probably definitely see it take over in the coming years. But right now, today, um, I think the Navi GPUs are a better buy at the mid-range. Of course, NVIDIA is sitting atop the Mountain King with cards like the 2080 Ti and the 2080 Super that's coming. I'm expecting that to probably edge out Radeon 7, which was a very close card with the regular RTX 2080. So I think they're coming along with the Super card to kind of you know give them a little bit more space there. But at the end of the day, I feel like what NVIDIA did with putting out these super cards to kind of screw over AMD ended up backfiring on them horribly because with the price drop on these Navi GPUs, it changes the picture immensely. It changes everything, which is why uh, one of the reasons I had to delay this video by a couple days is because my thoughts and everything on it and then also, you know, change also a driver change kind of at the last minute uh, definitely affected testing. So I wanted to go back and retest 
on these graphics cards and then with the price change that definitely changes my conclusion if we were just taking a look at it um, you know for what it was supposed to be before Nvidia decided to go ahead and shoot themselves in the foot with the 2060 super card so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on the Navi GPUs the pricing with super and all of that I'll definitely be posting a uh, follow-up video with just the raw benchmark footage at 1080p on ultra with the 5700 which is this is not the 5700 here but with the 5700 and the rtx 2060 i will be posting that probably tomorrow so stay tuned for that video and subscribe for more content also probably coming either later this week or early next week we're going to take a look at ultra wide performance on these cards so if you're a 34 40 by 1440 user let me know down in the comments below and if you also wanted to see 25 60 by 1080 i think that's a much less common resolution for ultra wide but if there are any of you out there let me know down in the comments below and i'll decide whether or not we should uh, take a look at that resolution as well for ultra wide but i'm going to go ahead and get on out of here guys as always i look forward to your comments discussion and everything down below and i do appreciate you liking commenting and subscribing on all of my videos and i'll see you tomorrow for another one Ta-ra.